Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Happy Monday, out here on snow once again. And today we're gonna to talk about a topic that, well, is a big part of my life and as a backcountry rider should be a big part of yours and that's learning how to use our transceiver. Let's get into it. All right, so we're talking about transceivers. Whether you wear your transceiver tethered inside of the holster that's here on your body, a lot of them are created that way. Whether you've got it into a pocket that's tethered hopefully to something internal to the pocket, um, it's important that the transceiver is tethered. And so having this thing where I can easily get to it, it's accessible, I'm not fighting a bunch of gear to get it out. Obviously in the event of a avalanche or any kind of a situation like that, getting to my transceiver, getting it turned over into search mode, all of those things are really important. Today we're gonna to just talk about the primary function of a transceiver. No matter what transceiver you purchase, they basically have two primary functions, right? They send a signal and they search for a signal. As you turn your transceiver on, you check its battery life, which is an everyday with your group as you do a trailhead check, whatever that looks like for you guys. And I'm, I'm hoping that you guys are all developing some type of a, a repetitious system for doing trailhead checks with each person that you ride with. But as you turn it on, it's giving you its battery life. It's running through its functions. This is an Ortovox 3 Plus. This is a transceiver that I have been using for a number of years and have just developed um, a lot of trust with the transceiver. And so that's why I'm using it. Anyways, I turn this on. This will kind of run through its functions. It will let me know its latest update and then it will tell me its battery life, which this morning it was 99. And so transceivers, whether they're in bars like a Peeps transceiver or any others that will show you somewhat of a, a number there, that battery life is relatable to how much battery life it has. Remember that somewhere around between 60 and 70% is when I'm gonna think about changing the batteries. Remember that those batteries could go into your your garage door opener or your remote control or any other type of device and probably last for another year but it is not going to stay in my transceiver because this is a life-saving piece of equipment so around that 60 70 percent i'm going to change it out so that i am looking at fresh batteries knowing that when i do go to use it i've got plenty of battery life and while we're talking about batteries remember that we are going to use alkaline batteries in our transceivers and not lithiums okay so basic function, send and receive. As I turn the transceiver on, I check its battery life, I stow it, that is in send. So it is out, out sending a signal, right? You can picture sort of the wings of a butterfly. That's kind of what that's looking like, out sending a signal. I get buried in an avalanche, I am sending a signal to those on top of the snow that go into search mode that are now searching for that signal sending, if that makes sense. So the way I go into search mode with this transceiver, relatively simple, two arrows on the top, I pop this open, goes into search mode. It's going to take a second here. And then the moment that it seeks something, another signal sending, which is my cameraman right here, Steven, and it is picking you up. Right now you can hear it changing its audible tone. It's getting louder. The audible tones are getting closer together. The arrow is directing me right towards camera. It's showing me that I've got one person buried and that I, as I hone in towards you, I'm about 2.5 meters away. Let's remember, that these things measure in meters. Most of us don't think in feet and uh, meters. Sorry for my Canadians that are out there. We think in feet. So we know that there is three feet to a meter. Most transceivers will start to really hold on to a signal somewhere around 40 meters. Well, what is that in feet? As you guys are guessing what that looks like, it's 131 feet. It's a long ways. So our transceivers have quite a lot of antenna strength, although it should be tested frequently. When we are in a avalanche situation i get everybody into search mode everybody is calling out those numbers we are looking for those numbers to decrease as they decrease remember that we're still talking about meters and not feet you'll listen to that transceiver those audible tones should depending on the type of transceiver that you have get either louder and or closer together and all that's doing is help clue you in to you are getting closer to that signal under the snow that is still sending as we get down, we get closer to that. We go in from our find search, our pinpoint search. You guys have seen those videos before, especially the one where I use two probes as a way to do that real close pinpoint parallel versus perpendicular and use those probes to get down and find hopefully that signal sending. And if it isn't a live situation, we've got somebody out and we get to an airway. So basic function of these is two. Cell phones, 10 billion, right? But we practice with those. What we don't practice with enough is our transceivers. They send and they search. 
Understanding the battery life and why that's important and having that group conversation is ultra important. We're gonna do a test right now. All right, so we're just sort of mimicking a search. You guys can see the transceiver above the snow, but it's a great way to just understanding what our transceiver is doing. Right now I'm showing one person buried. You can hear that audible tone. It's loud, it's close together. The rings around what is telling me 0.8 of a meter are condensing. As I pull away from this, you will listen to that. You'll hear that audible tone, it gets further away. And look at that. So listen to it again as it comes in. And even though we can see this, I'm gonna go right past this. Right now this is still showing me one person buried. It's showing 0.8. I'm down at the surface of the snow, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, it's growing. I'm gonna come back, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. It's got some distance there that it's climbing. 0.8, so I'm gonna come back you guys can see how those distances change. Remember, when you're using a transceiver, we're gonna try to go back. We're gonna only do this one time. I wanna check where that low number was. 0.7 seems like my low, so there's my 0.7. I'm gonna come, I'm gonna go this way. You guys are gonna listen to this audible tone, listen to it change. I'm getting further away. So in a rescue, it'd be really important as you start to listen to your transceiver to tell those above the snow that are making a bunch of racket Maybe you guys should you know, quiet down so that I can hear that thing. You can hear that audible tone. It's getting further and further away. Now watch this, I'm back to my 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. Checking it one more time, back to this 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and boom, we are right on to that buried signal that is still sending under the snow. So that's our buddy. That's our guy that's under the snow wearing a transceiver, hopefully in the proper spot. Hopefully it's got good uh, battery strength and you can understand what is happening there. Remember, I don't get to get one without the other. If I can't see this and I went over here and I relied on 0.7 to be my low number. You guys remember what low number really was and that was 0.2. If I dig a big old hole over here, I've used up all my energy, right? I've, I've expelled every bit of the group's energy here when our buried person was, his, was, was here. So refer back to you know, our pinpoint search video that we did a year ago talking about how we'd use that probe, how we literally take that probe and snap a line in the snow. So as I get my low number here, I'm not finished. I'm gonna comb over and get my low number there. Hopefully this again, guys, is another video that is a refresher of just how simple these transceivers are. It just takes practice. And let's remember, practice is never gonna make us perfect, but it will certainly make us more prepared. Leave those questions below and we will see you next time.